Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'm going to show you how I made this card. It folds flat for posting but it's a, well I haven't decided what I'm going to call this one yet but what happened was the other day I saw somebody making a card like this but her panel here was larger and it went across that way and I thought that looks like one of my cards that I made few years ago and I found it these photos aren't very good because this is print screen um, from my computer and my um, ink, uh, ink toners need replacing but that was a card that it made me think of and what the um, person had done was she turned it sideways like that and I thought that's a really good idea okay so it's like two boxes so what I thought was I would take, turn it sideways but bring it down so that it's like a brick wall and then I could have my animals peering over. As I say I'm not really sure what I'm calling it at the moment but first of all these here are from the Peekaboo Farm stamp set and they have been fussy cut. They've also been coloured using my Stamping Right markers the reason for that is because I, if I'd used blends it would have been bleeding at the back of these and that's something I don't like. There is a way around it as long as you don't have to fussy cut. If you've got dyes, very easy way and that's one of the things I'm going to be showing you today. I've made a second card and that's this one, my first Christmas card of 2021. Okay, lots of stars. I put some stars down there as well because you can see those. Again, folds flat. It goes in our regular A6 envelope. So I'm going to explain to you the card like this. I'm going to be using a brick wall, not this particular brick wall. And this actually fits that from side to side. There are no um, gaps all around it. And I'm also going to show you how to, not show you, I'm going to tell you how to do it like that. The only difference is, really, is the measurements. So first of all, I'm going to give you the measurements for this one. And then I'm going to say, if you want to do it for the brick wall, this is the way you do it. I will put it in the box below the video and I will make it quite clear uh, with a brick wall or without a brick wall. And it will have all the measurements twice. OK, so you only need to follow one set of me measurements. You won't have to chop from these to this to this to this okay I will do it really really um, very straightforward for you so um, this one I the stamp set I used for that is Be Jolly and again that is another one that I fussy cut I only do the fussy cutting on the easy ones when I'm preparing for a video um, okay so that was that one the Christmas blessings to you and yours comes from Happy Holidays. This is another new stamp set. Um, that I'm going to be using. That I'm going to be using. Right, so let me stand those there. I knew I'd forget some things. And the most important thing I've forgotten is my... Um, oh dear. Um, there we go. My silicon mat. Other bits I can reach across for if I need them. So let me start off with telling you the card pieces that you will need if you want to do this. So you've got the gaps all around your regular layers. My card is going to be, I'm using a different um, stamp set for this one. And the measurements I'm giving you are inches for A4 cardstock users. I will do the metric measurements and I will work out what the North American inches are. That's for those who use letter size cardstock. Um, I think that's going to be quite straightforward for me to do. So they will all be in the box below. Okay. So to start off with, this is Old Olive and it measures four and one eighth inches by ten and three quarter inches. And another piece of old olive which measures two inches by six and a quarter inches then a piece of whisper white uh, sorry basic white which measures three and seven eighths inches by five and a half inches 
a piece of basic white which measures one and three quarter inches by three and seven eighths inches another piece of basic white which measures one inch by three and seven eighths inches another piece of basic white which measures one and three quarter inches by four and a quarter inches and another piece which measures one and three quarter inches by one inch now you also need some designer series paper now this is a designer design paper that I'm going to be using at the back of my card and on this bit here as well and I, you can see I've already adhered the layers on this one so this design series paper measures three and three quarter inches by five and three eighths inches and this design series paper is from Beauty of the Earth and then you need another piece of design series paper which measures one and five eighths inches by three and three quarter inches and another piece of designer series paper which is seven eighths by three and three quarter inches and for this one you need a piece of designer series paper which is four and one eighth inches by one and five eighths inches and for this one you need a piece of designer series paper which is one and five eighths inches by seven eighths inches If you want to do the brick wall, you do all of these pieces and then to do the brick wall, you don't need the whisper white for it. Okay, so get rid of those two, don't need that. But you need two pieces of brick wall, one piece that measures four inches by two inches and another piece that measures one and a quarter inches by two inches and this design series paper is from bloom where you're planted okay i hope i haven't confused you like that another idea that i had about this i haven't had a chance to do it was to do this but put it across the top possibly all the way across the top and then having christmas baubles hanging down i think that would look quite nice especially if they're not fixed in fact, if that was shorter, and then just have it loose there. Hmm. I don't know. It's a thought. I might um, get and do that sometime. If I do, I'll share it on my blog. So what we're going to do first of all is some scoring. So I'm going to bring my scoreboard. No, not my scoreboard. I'm going to use my trimmer, which is here. And you are going to score this. Um, let me have a look. Yes, I don't need to open up the arm. The half an inch I'm doing from this side because it's much, much easier. Okay, so the first score line is half an inch. Turn it around. Okay, so that's your first score line. The second score line is at one and three quarter inches. The next one is at three and three quarter inches. And the next one is at five inches. Now the other piece, you need to score at half an inch again. And turn it around and then one and three quarter inches. So the two score lines on this are the same as the first two on the big piece. Okay. I didn't realise, but somebody pointed out to me the other day that I always say that the cards I show are easy. Um, so I'm definitely not going to say it. <laughs> there we go. Oh, 
sticky there. Okay, so I'm burnishing my folds. And they're going all the same way. Just make sure that you do line up straight. The only question mark over my idea about having the strip at the top of the card is whether it would actually stand up or would it topple I mean obviously it would topple if it's too heavy but I think with just some baubles on it I'm not sure it would but it's definitely something that I'm going to be trying now before I go any further I'm going to put my pieces on okay I've used the top part of this design because it's I don't think it's meant to be Christmas trees, but it does look like it. Um, but it went from right to the top because it's the lightest colour. There are so many stamp sets that, and dies that this would go with. Just so many. I'm actually going to be using the counting sheep and the counting sheep, well the sheep dies, but the dies that go with counting sheep. Now you will find that to get an even edge around all of this, you'll find that this will come nearly to the fold there, the score line. Okay, as long as that's nice and equal, it doesn't matter really how far that one goes up. And now once you've done that one, we need the other two, one here and one here. So flip your card over. done that too big. No, haven't you put it in the wrong place, you silly date. There we go. It's been a little bit of a um, day with some drama packed into it. Oops, that's upside down. Because I'm not concentrating. Yeah, okay. Quick, quick, quick. Well done, Tombo. Um, That's better. For those of you who follow my blog will know that um, I've been helping hubby in the garden this year and one of the things we did was we were down to two, you know, three goldfish so we decided, because there were two big ones and one medium one, occasionally we saw a black one as well but the black one was the same as the um, more medium sized one and we decided we'd get four more goldfish little babies right I'll come back to the story in a moment does that look crooked I'll check that once I've done the video um right now we need to stick this down so on the top one here I like to cut that triangle off I just cut right up to the fold line. I'll show you why I do that. If I show you both of these, this one I didn't, and it's really very, very obvious that it's there. But this one I cut off, and I just think it looks a little bit more tidy. And on this one, I also cut that one off as well. Okay. It doesn't really matter if you don't do it. Right, now let's put this card together first. And what I'm going to do is I use tear and tape and Tombow. I would have, if we still used, if we still sold um, the red sticky strip, I'd much rather be using that. But putting these two together our tear and tape and the uh, Tom and our dear old combo. It really does make it a really good strong fix. So what I like to do is get this over. B 
because this is only going to stick the bit where the tape is, it's not going to stick this and it's not going to stick that bit there. I like to add some Tombow also because when I'm gluing it down with tear and tape there, when tear and tape goes down it's not very easy to lift it up but if you put Tombow over the top of the tear and tape you've still got the benefit of the bit of wiggle room that you get from Tombow. So let me show you. Okay so I just put a little bit over there wouldn't have really liked that much. In fact, I'm going to mop this, it's too much coming out. Definitely too much. And I put a little bit on that cardstock that I can see between the score line and the tape, and a little bit on this side. But as I say, that's gone on far, far too heavy. As you know, I do blot a lot of my things that I've put Tombow on if I'm not happy. And to blot something, if you hadn't seen this before, I just pop it down on there. There we go, that's a lot, lot better. Rather than take any chances, I'll do it twice. As you can see, that didn't stick to my um, paper there because I've got the Tombow on top of the um, tear and tape. Now, what you need to do is with your card like that, in fact, I don't need that, do I? and this is your box piece, you need to have both the pieces vis visible and then you're going to fold this bit over and glue it down. Make sure you hold this so that it is going flat. Not surprisingly I've got some glue there which will have to come off otherwise when it's closed it's going to stick to that. Now, when you've given that a little bit of time to dry, just go over the inside with your bone folder to make sure it's got really good adhesion. In fact, I wonder if I can... Oh, yes, I can. Let me just get rid of that glue. That's it, it's gone. Okay, so that's the first part of our box and you see it will fold down nice and flat. Now the next piece is this one. Obviously if you're doing it so that you've got your usual quarter of an inch gap first and then the extra one eighth inch gap you just do exactly the same as I've layered on there. But if you want all of this to be brickwork and I do this to give this extra strength because I wouldn't want a brick wall, brick wall uh, without cardstock beneath it and doing it green because obviously you're going to see the inside of it um, not a lot but you will see some of it so at least it'll all blend in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Tombow on this Now with the brick wall it doesn't really matter which way you have this up and if you've cut it correctly this is going to fit perfectly but I haven't have I? That's four and a half, what did I say it should be? That's my fault. I said that the brick, this piece, I said the DSP should be four inches by two inches. It should be four and a half by two inches. Let me just get myself a replacement piece. Um, right, I think that should be, is that two inches? Nope. So right.
let's try this again now what I will do I think I will cut both pieces otherwise, otherwise they're not going to line up are they right so I need this at two inches let's go from the top so one piece is one and uh, four and a half inches yes And the other one is one and a quarter inches. Let's just double check that that was the right size. Yes. Yes. Oops. Okay, so they're the two pieces. try this again. I'm going to put some more Tombow on this. I seem to recall having done this last week. I had to, to re-put some glue, some Tombow onto something. Okay. Now at the moment it doesn't matter which way it goes up. It's important to make sure that that comes up to the edge of your scored line. If you've done this too big, you want the edge to come off over here so that you can just cut that piece off. Okay, in fact, I've gone over the top there as well. I think I might leave that one, and then this one I would be more worried about a bit sticking off at the end rather than coming over the top. Now which way do I need this? Right, that's the way. And I'm going to put this right up to that score line. Okay, so you will get that little bit of green, but that's where your card is going to bend. Your card stock is going to bend. Okay, and I don't want it sticking on that bit. Okay. So there we go, that was way, way over. Um, I'm just going to cut that off. If you cut it from the back so you can see where you are cutting. I suppose really I should cut that off as well, shouldn't I? Should. Anyway, back to the goldfish. We went and bought four. Everybody seemed to be happy. Uh, the big ones not taking much notice of the little ones until yesterday. And apparently, the two big goldfish started attacking Snow White. Oh, yes, all their goldfish have got names. Um, and Snow White was like the medium sized one and at first they were just chasing her around but today they were really bashing into her and at one stage she was lay lying on her side so it needed us to intervene on what was going on so okay now this bit, bit here I am going to cut that triangle off like I did on the other one And then I'm going to use some more tear and tape. Okay, so with the right side up, I'm going to put that in the middle again. And then turn it over 
and you need a piece on the inside there okay it's the opposite end to where you've cut the corner off now what I do on this bit is I put three strips and then I don't worry about the need for Tombow and you can go as far along here as a width of here because this is going to be sticking on that bit there If you go over the edge like that, that's no problem. Just take the backing off and then curl the sticky tape back on itself. That will be fine. Right, so this piece with those on there is going to go straight onto here and I'm going to line this bit up with that fold there, okay? You might decide that you only want to go up to the end of the white piece or it's your choice. I like to go up right to the edge and make sure that that is straight along here. Okay, there we go. So that one's all right. Now to do this one, you need to take this off. Anyway, long story short, we rescued Snow White, put her into another big tub of water and used a net to try and catch the two big ones. Well, that was a story and a half in itself. But, long story short, Hubby went down and he took all the plants out of the pond and drained it. He said that was the only way he could actually do it. Um, so we've got a very nice clean pond now. Right now, how did I do this? Yes, that's right, isn't it? Right, now to stick this down. Yes, that's right. Just make sure you're lining up straight here. There we go. There we go. So we've got our brick wall, literally as a brick wall. So really pleased about that. Let me just give a little bit of a rub down there to make sure that that stays really nicely. So there we go, that's the card. Now what I'm going to put in here I'm going to be using the Counting Sheep stamp set. Now this is one of the free gifts that you can choose on a qualifying order during August, from the 3rd of August till the 30th of September. Any order that you put in, £45, you can choose this. Um, the gifts are, you get one for every £45, so if you placed an order for £90, you could choose two gifts, which means you could also choose the dies that go with this, okay, which is absolutely amazing value because, you know, if you're a regular customer, you know how much a stamp set and dies will cost and you can get them free with qualifying orders. 
as you can see I've taken all mine out because I have already done them but I want to show you one how I've coloured mine and two how I deal with the fact that I stamp with the um, I colour with the stamping blends because they they do bleed why have I got this big cable down in front of me excuse me a moment I hope you haven't been able to see that oh, it's out of the way now okay so this is my stamparatus I've got my stamps already lined up I'm quite happy to redo things like this because although I'm not using them because I've already done all of mine um, they will be ready for the next project I want to do so I'm going to use Mento ink there we go and I love using my stamparatus because it means if I do it too light I can go back again and stamp once more you'll also know that I really have a thing about eyes on my creatures or whatever and Stamping Up have listened and we do have eyes on nearly everything so I'm really really pleased about that I can't help feeling though that the eyes on this are a little bit girlish so I do amend them very slightly and I want to show you how I do that the one in the middle I forgot to do anything about it so I am I wonder if I've still got that scrap of paper because I did stamp them on a piece of paper I could have tested it on that never mind right okay so first of all to do the eyes I use a one of these it's Stadler Tri Plus Fine Liners it's 0.3 millimeters thick which is really very very fine and I'm using the black now let me just bring these up so you can actually see the eyes you see she looks a bit on the girlish side next one's got his, his eyes closed oh no they're all hers aren't they a sheep <laughs> um, and then that one as well so I'm just going to finish them off myself okay so this one I just do a little semicircle to join them up and then I make the eye solid okay so that's good and then just join this one up again no I mean as well and then do a solid eye. I think that looks much better. Now can I do this one? Um, I'm going to do a half circle. Have they got eyebrows? No they haven't. I'm going to do a half circle and then an eye. Oh yes, I love it. Oh my goodness, I do love it when a plan comes together. Let me show you these three eyes, sets of eyes now. Okay, now I think that looks a bit more, less girlish. That one looks better with the eye open. Could have been done a bit bigger, but never mind. And then that one as well. Much, much nicer. Right, okay. So, to colour these, I have been using my Ivory Stamping Blend for the faces and Light and Dark Smoky Slate. So let's do dark first and I use a dark I'm only going to do one of these as I say I have already done them and it's a bit tedious just watching colouring it's a bit like watching somebody gluing and at the end of the story is that the two big goldfish were caught and taken to the guy who lives over the road because he's got a pond apparently he's only got one fish over there so but I don't know if anybody knows anything about goldfish what makes them turn aggressive like that 
and it was very, very aggressive. I mean, poor Snow White, she just laid there like, she played dead. I go with a light smoky slate, or oh, a jog then, on the legs. Do the ears, then all around the edges, I just go like colouring in in a circular motion. It means that the face bit gets all filled in. In fact I think I might have decided to do fill in all the faces in the end. Did I? Yes I did. And then when I went round the body I didn't go round these bits. I just stuck to the edge of the body. You better see mine in a moment. There we go. Did I stop? Let me see. Uh, oh, we came down here as well. And then for the face. I used this one, which is ivory, and I coloured all of the face in. wasn't quite sure about this. I went on to Pinterest to see what people had done. I couldn't decide whether anybody had used the ivory or not. But, okay, so that's that. Now, this is what I don't like when I'm using characters like I did on this and where the blends bleed through to the other side which is to me not a nice look but with these they're these are die cut so if I could show you these okay so these are mine but let me bring them up close so you can see exactly what I've done This one I actually coloured the face before I had a chance, before I'd thought about doing the eye, so I wasn't able to go back to do that. But that's how I've coloured them. All right. And which is the one that I haven't done, this one. Okay, so now if I don't know where these sheep are going, so they may. This may be visible, it may not be visible, but rather than taking a chance, what I do is after I've die cut these, I go through and I die cut some blank ones. And then, as I have with these, I stick them on the back and you can't see anything. Okay, so that's what I really wanted to show you about these. As I say, it works well if you have a set of dies to go with. Um, your images. If you don't then it would mean adhering your stamped image onto another piece of white, basic white cardstock and then colouring, uh, cutting out the two at the same time which um, makes fussy cutting even harder. I mean it can be done. So where's my tweezers? I find it easiest just to get hold of maybe their legs or anything quite small so that you can squeeze them into the right place. Okay, now I can use these anywhere I like on my card.
Um, was there anything else I wanted to show you before I move on? Oh, yes, we need the birthday sentiment. Now I'm going to be using this one here. And this came from, did I show you? No, I didn't. This one comes from Sweet Ice Cream, and it's this one here. And what I've done is I've just cut it out freehand. It's something that I did on my blog the other day. I've seen loads of people doing it and I always admired it, but very, very, very rarely ever remember to do it. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to use the Old Olive ink. I'll test it on there first. Oh no, that's not a piece, is it? I think this is. There we go, that's a scrap. This is regular for me now to test my ink pads because I think most of them have been re-inked and that means quite often they are um, too wet but this one looks fine. And of course it doesn't matter whether I stamp straight or not because I'm going to be cutting it out freehand anyway. There we go, lovely. So let me just cut this out. Now this you can't do wrong because you just follow around wherever the letters go. I don't take too much care over it. I don't get myself stressed about which direction I'm going in. The only thing I do say is it's better to leave a bigger gap with your scissors rather than a smaller gap. I did one last week and it was too small a gap and it didn't look so nice. So now I try and take a very wide berth. Let's get rid of that, that's getting in my way. Okay, so when you start again, just make sure that you don't have any pointy bits. a little bit pointy that's going round the corner mm -hmm. there we go yep I'm happy with that So, right, how do I want my card to go? Now this is going to be the happy birthday. Now because that's got all over colour on there, I'm not worried about that not having um, a green layer underneath it. And how we, now this one always looks if like he's jumping. This one looks like the, was it the goat that I said looked as if he was on another planet? And in the dies, you can cut out these wooden fences. Now I did do two, it's not a stamp. All the stamps that you get are the three sheep, the party hat, the grass, and two sentiments. But this is in there as well. So do I want to have this one jumping over a fence? Mm, 
Mm, should have thought about that sooner, shouldn't I? Because that's in the way there. I could just cut it up. Do one, can one of these look as if his feet up on there? No, you can't, can you? And you can't really, because you're going the wrong way. Yes, you can. You're trying to get out. Oh, uh, that's it, I know. If we put the fence right up to the edge there, if I look at that, that fits in beautifully. Um, then we can have him behind trying to jump over. And then we can have this one in the land of whatever. This one with the sentiment. Okay, right, let's work on that. Now, in the absence of having thought about that, what I might do, because that's a bit of a squeeze, I could cut a bit off there, couldn't I? And then bring him up and over. He could come over the top here a little bit to, and still feel, fit into our envelopes. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to I could cut those bits off, couldn't I? No, that makes it look more authentic. Let's cut them off of here. There we go. So I'm going to put him in here first. We know he's got to go up there somewhere. I'm not going to put him on dimensionals because in the envelope that's going to close down. In fact, that's quite good, isn't it? When somebody opens a card, it's going to be like that. So he's looking around at this one. So is this one. Okay, yes, I like that. So let's put this one down first. And I'm going to glue him down. Oh, here we go. So I'm not going to go too close with this head. That's it, so I'm happy with him. Go to put the gate that way. Didn't take enough off there, let's take another small amount. If you know your design before you put it all together, obviously it would be easier to fix this at the time. Personally, I like to see what my card is doing before I um, commit myself. And as you see, I have to move that bit as well because it's getting in my way. Right, did I glue you down? Nope, I can lift you up, that's good. Okay, so I'm going to glue all this down. I hope it's not going to bend around his body. Just from the thickness of the cardstock because it's two thicknesses. Because I put that plain one on. Right. That's it. Okay, so he looks like he's jumping over the fence. That's good. Yep, I'm happy with that. Just press it all down. And I really don't think you could see any difference with that being a bit higher. If you find, like I might do, that you've got glue, because I've moved that 
gate I've got a little bit of glue down there so I'll wait until that dries properly and then I will go and use my uh, adhesive eraser now I'm going to have this one here now he can come up high because the card will go down like that so I could have my sentiment right the way underneath and then he would be in fact he could be dancing on top of the wall let's put him on next and this one he's going to be going on dimensionals So the other panic we've had today is my son got two very sore elbows and it was diagnosed as bursitis, like equivalent of housemaid's knee apparently. And today he found that it was getting worse and that's after having antibiotics from the doctor. And he went to the hospital, sat in a and &E for nearly a couple of hours, which I suppose isn't too bad really. Um, and uh, so they've given him more instructions, if he does this, if he does that and everything else. But it was a long time waiting for him to, you know, be sorted out and come back. Because, you know, no matter how old your children get, they're always your children, aren't they? And he's my baby. <laughs> All six foot four, whatever he is. Uh, six foot three. I don't know actually. I know his son's even taller, my grandson. Oh, for goodness sake. Right. That's it. Right, well, don't need you. You can go back, live for another day. He's got to uh, keep an eye on it too, and if he if it gets any bigger, if he gets pain, if it does this, if it does whatever, um, it means that it's gone through the through to the bone, um, and then he needs to take himself back to the hospital. We are so blessed to have our national health service. This one's going to go, I said you can be dancing on the wall. Move over a bit. There we go. So that's you. Let's get rid of those. This. I'm going to pop that up as well. Where's my big ones? Oh, here we go. And we just have one little one down there. One little one up there, that's great. These things are getting attached to me today. right in the center I think don't have to worry about it being straight now this one 
you want to be up there or do you want to go underneath here a bit or you could go over um, I want you at the end there actually oh there you go that's nice so it's really just the lower part of you I think you're too wide for the small yes you are um, have I got any small ones left? Let's just cut some more of these. Turn that one. Oops, no, just one. That one and the big ones. Oh, no, 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 no. I hear you. You're shouting at me. I don't want all these up here, do I? The technique that I told you about if I'd been using like this stamping blends it also applies when you do something like the pansy set when you die cut the pansies because you've got a different pattern on the back if you wanted that to come up without seeing it then you can die cut the um, another pansy let me just have a quick peek from the back yes that's far far too too big There we go. So this is all they need really. I'm going to close that so I can see what the, the picture is that the recipient sees. What I might do is, because you can see that's, oh no, I don't want you to go too long, do I? Otherwise you won't go, in, go into the envelope. No, I was going to say maybe I'll slip a couple of dimensionals in there, but I won't. No, he's fine. So, there we go. Let me just clear up this little bit of rubbish. So, what do you think? It's a bit of fun, isn't it? Really lovely. Whichever way you look at that, and of course it stands up beautifully. And what would I do? Where would I write the sentiment? I would write straight on the back there. If you don't like that idea, then you could die cut a basic white shape of some sort so you can write your greeting in there. So, I'm pleased with that. Very pleased. So, I hope you like today's project um, this one I feel need is, needs something else but I can't think of it at the moment um, if you've got any suggestions please leave them in the, in the comments box below that would be appreciated so let me just bring these down and then this one down there we go so many thanks for joining me today I hope you've enjoyed this project and I hope you give it a try I will put all the measurements in the box below and I will do two sections. One will be if you're doing a brick wall and the other one is if you're not doing a brick wall. Okay, If you're not doing a brick wall then you want to do all these, sorry, around here, you want to do the gaps on this lower bit. Okay. Um, I'll also put a list of all the products that I've used for today's card. 
don't forget it is only available during celebration and it is while stocks last and I do think that this particular set will be very popular so if you like it don't leave it too long before you decide that you're going to go for it and there will be a link in the box below for all the products that I have used and if you've enjoyed my video and like to be notified each time I upload a new one please click on the subscribe button down there in the bottom right hand corner and then click the bell so you get the notifications as I say many thanks for joining me today I hope you've enjoyed it I look forward to seeing you next week in the meantime please take care stay safe happy crafting cheerio